Good job, stupid. Hey guys, how's it going? Today I am building a reception style desk edition for a friend of mine for her home based business. To start this project off, I wrestle a full sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood onto the table saw to rip off a strip to set the height of the leg or legs. I don't know, you decide. Probably a little bit more dangerous than it needed to be, but I didn't have a straight edge that long. Maybe that's something I should add to the build list. Since I know for sure I can't get a sheet through the table saw crossways, I throw a couple sacrificial boards under the plywood, mark out my cut line, set up my cutting guide, throw some painter's tape down to prevent chip out, then to further prevent chip out I cut through once at half depth and then cut through again at full depth. Once I have the side wings and back cut out, I noticed that the side I had selected as the show side had a couple nets. The other side had a bunch of knots and since it's plywood, they had a fairly regular pattern that I wasn't a fan of. So don't tell my wife, but I stole her iron to try the water and iron trick to pop out these dents and blemishes. If you don't know what that is, you might have better luck asking someone else to explain how it works. But what I did was rub some water into the grain of the dent and then place the damp cloth over the top of the dent. And once the iron was heated up, I ironed out the dent until it looked like the cloth had started to dry out. The bigger dent I needed to come back and do a couple more treatments on, but this small blemish right here came out on the first try. It will need some sanding to blend it in with the rest of the sheet, but the whole thing will need sanding either way, so I'm fairly happy with how this worked out. I'll wait. Once the dents in the front are taken care of, I flip the plywood over and with my pocket hole jig, I drill in a bunch of pocket holes in the back, on the sides and top of the back. Typically with pocket holes, you want the pocket holes on the outside so the screws have more material and support to bite into. However, since the outside is also the show side, I want to make sure that they're hidden. And once the desktop is installed, the side panels will have more than enough support, so I'm not concerned about it. With the pocket holes drilled out, I install the side panels with glue and the aforementioned pocket hole screws. With the back and sides of the desk assembled, it's time to start on the desktop. After I grab my measurements, I cross cut another sheet of plywood the same way as before, and since this is a little easier to handle now, I rip down the plywood to rough size at the table saw. After the pieces are ripped down, I break out a tube of polyurethane construction adhesive and completely coat one of the two sides. Then I clamp down the desktop to my workbench and leave it to cure overnight. The next day I pull off the clamps, scrape off the glue squeeze out, and then over at the table saw I run the opposite side through the saw, and then back to the original side to clean up the edge. Then I confirm the final length needed and cut it to length at the miter saw. Then I bring the rest of the desk back to the workbench, center the desktop, and install it to the rest of the desk with pocket screws. Holy tongue twister. Now that the main pieces of the desk are now fully assembled, I run over to the store to pick up some pocket hole plugs. I probably could have used cut up dowel, but I didn't feel like cutting up the 30 plus segments I would have needed. So now I put some glue in the pocket holes, pop the maple plugs into place, and tap them down with the mallet to set them in. With that done, I move the desk off my workbench outfeed table so I can use my table saw to cut up some edge banding. What I typically like to do for edge banding is to cut 2x4s or whatever lumber I need down to 1 8 or 3 16 inch strips. Since I have a 1.5 inch thick desktop and I like to have wider edge banding to cut the size, I cut the 2x4 to 2 inch width and just at the end of the first strip I blow the breaker. This happens fairly often when I rip down 2x4s, so I make sure everything's shut off and shoot off a quick text to the wife to hit the breaker and I'm back up and running. With the edge banding cut to size, I take a sanding block to the plywood edge to take off the rough edges and the fuzzies. Then I apply some glue to the desktop, spread it out, and tape the edge banding into place. Then with my pull saw, I cut the excess off the ends so I can repeat the process to the rest of the edges throughout the desktop. While the edge banding was drying on the desktop, I figured now was a good time to take care of the pocket hole plugs. With my pull saw, I go through and cut the excess off all of the plugs. This left a little bit of scarring on the plywood, but it isn't anything that won't sand out, so I'm not concerned. And now with the side plugs taken care of and the first batch of edge banding dry, I continue on installing the edge banding, starting with the show side of the desk. The only real difference here is that I use the actual clamps this time around since the tape wasn't working as well on the corners. And now that all of the edge banding is done, it's time to cut off the excess on all the sides. 
I throw a flush trim bit in my trim router and trim off the excess. The first one I didn't have the bit set to the right depth so I cleaned it up with a chisel, reset the bit depth, and carried on with the rest of the edge banding. Anywhere the router wouldn't go, like corners, I would take care of with the chisel. With everything glued, dried, and trimmed, it's time for sanding. Up to 220 grit. But before I go too crazy with the sanding, I break out the wood filler and fill in some of the gaps that didn't fully seal in between the edge banding and the plywood. Then I go crazy with the sanding. Scared this out of me. Why the f did that happen? Must have overheated. Holy f that scared me. Then with the sanding done, I call in my brother-in-law to help me move this from the garage to the basement into my new stain and finishing room. And then I get to go crazy with finishing. I started with pre-stain conditioner and I'm not sure if I really needed it. I know it works better on other types of woods like pine, but this aspen plywood really didn't seem to need it, at least comparing it to other projects I've stained in the past where I didn't use it. Either way, pre-stain and then actual stain which I let sit on the surface for about 10 minutes and then wiped off the excess. I repeated this process two times. With the staining finished, I moved on to a satin oil-based polyurethane, of which I did three coats with a light sanding with 320 grit to denib the finish in between coats, and finish it off with a 3000 grit sanding pad at the end. Luckily, I had this convenient homemade fume extractor to pull all of these fumes out, otherwise I would have gassed out the entire house. Again, if you missed that video, you can check it out up here. About a week or so later, once the finishing was done, I borrowed my brother-in-law again to help me load, and my friend's van to help deliver the desk. The weather turned for the worse, and I didn't want to get the desk damaged by road spray or snow. Once the desk is back inside, the last step to finish this desk is to install these small right angle brackets. This is just to hook the legs underneath the existing desk to keep the reception addition from rocking and possibly falling. I install these on both sides of the reception edition. Since the reception edition was designed to fit around the outside of the existing desk, we just had to lift the existing desk over the top of the brackets and it slid right into place. And with that, this project is done. Overall, it was a pretty fun project to do. There was definitely a couple learning opportunities in here, and I'm happy with how it turned out. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this was a commission piece from my friend Felicia over at Enzo Health Solutions. So if you are in the Edmonton, Alberta area and are looking to get some acupuncture or a massage, I would recommend you contact her. I've linked to her Facebook page in the description below. So on that note, thank you guys for watching and if you like what I'm doing here, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. If you have any comments or questions, I look forward to reading them in the comments section below. And if you want to see more current projects, you can follow me on Instagram at JohnTheShriner. Otherwise, I hope to see you in the next video and have a good one.